if that makes sense. Definitely. Thank you, Dr. Brown. So the next question is for you, Dr. Tangsley. Um, your research around AI's use in education has illuminated some very useful insights underlying its negative impacts, as well as opportunities to empower black students by helping them develop critical race algorithmic literacy. Can you please break down what that is and provide an overview of some of your related research findings and the implications? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'll start with some of the larger research. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, many of us heard of Drought Chat GPT in November 2022, right? Um, but I think it's important to understand this issue um, has been historic, right? So there's all kinds of different artificial intelligence technologies that exist in school. Um, and I'm going to walk you through just some of them and some of their issues. So I'm going to start with learning technologies. Oftentimes, learning technologies um, like chatbot tutors are introduced into our schools, particularly black and brown schools, as things that can close the achievement gap, right? Um, that can provide support for students who are uh, navigating underfunded schools, right, um, or schools who um, teachers are often teaching outside of their core um, credential area, right? However, there's a lot of issues with these uh, tutoring uh, bots. So first of all, uh, Conmigo, which is one of the most popular chat tutor or chat bot tutor for math, is actually fundamentally unable to teach or do math. Right? And LLMs in general are fundamentally unable to do math. And that's because they're designed to find uh, patterns, probabilistic patterns in human language. They're not actually designed to do any sort of quantitative reasoning. Right? Um, also, so these technologies fail consistently when asked to do basic arithmetic, when asked to do geometry, when asked to do algebra. Right? Um, and so to target schools that have students who are um, struggling in math because of systemic um, issues, right? Systemic resource deprivation, et cetera, um, is to actually threaten to widen achievement gaps, right? Um, I'll also say that a study out of Penn recently found that students of color who use ChatGPT to study for math tests actually perform worse than the students who do use it to study for math tests. So again, we see how AI is actually inducing achievement gaps. Um, in the realm of social science, uh, teachers are often employing these AI technologies in order to um, teach social studies, right, and to make it more interactive, where you can have a bot actually don a historical persona. Um, but when researchers actually used Conmigo's Harriet Tubman AI, Right, which is already concerning. Um, but when they asked Harriet Tubman AI questions about black history, uh, the bot actually quoted Kanye West and said that slavery was a choice, right? Uh, that reparations were reverse racism, that CRT is problematic, right? All kinds of things. This is them teaching social studies in our schools, right? Um, ChatGPT has actually been found in March of 2024 to have astronomical risk for African Americans for a variety of reasons. One being that ChatGPT, as it scales, right? All, um, we're told that as these systems scales, these bugs can be worked out, right? But actually, as they scale, um, they become increasingly anti-black. These systems optimize for anti-blackness, so it becomes more covert and more violent. And as an example, researchers found that. Um, ChatGPT is more likely to uh, suggest black folks for lower paying jobs and harsher sentences, but also more likely to recommend them for the death penalty, right? And these are the technologies that are undergirding our predictive policing systems and our automated sentencing systems, right? Um, and so as a result of that study, researchers found that ChatGPT actually exhibits the highest a level of anti-black racism ever experimentally recorded. The only period that it was closest to was Jim Crow, right? So that's bad. <laughs> That's the learning technologies. Um, but those are not the only technologies in schools. Our schools are also adopting anti-cheating technologies. Two-thirds of our schools actually use anti-cheating technologies, right? And this came around the time where people were saying that kids are cheating with ChatGPT, and so they adopted technologies to stop this cheating from happening, this cheating. Um, so AI detectors are some of the most popular ones, right? When teachers use anti-cheating technologies to determine if students used AI for their writing, right? Um, these technologies, again, are fundamentally incapable of distinguishing between human-generated writing and AI writing, so they're just fundamentally incorrect a, a majority of the time. Um, but also, researchers found that these tools misidentify, or they over-identify black 
English, right, AAVE, um, as being AI generated, which means that black students are more likely to be falsely flagged as cheaters by these technologies at a rate of 67%, right? Um, as a result, they're often um, given lower grades, right? They're, they report having uh, failed courses because their teachers believe that the AI is true, right? Um, but in fact, and they also get disciplinary issues, right? When you're constantly flagged as cheating. So that's an issue. Um, I also talk about the school safety technologies. So the rise of school shootings has also encouraged schools to adopt AI technologies that can predict, to um, detect and deter campus-based violence, right? And to proactively search for signs of distress or mental health disorders. Um, these content moderation systems that exist not only in the Wi-Fi, but also in the school-owned devices, flag searches for black English, or searches for black culture, right? So a search um, that said, I, uh, what is Juneteenth flagged as being inappropriate or explicit, right? Black content is blocked from these devices. Um, and then uh, if you were to actually write emails um, using AAVE, the content moderation system also flags that as being dangerous, right? So not only are students unable to access content uh, about their lives and their histories and their culture, um, but these flags are also uh, disciplinary flags, right? So you're going to get expelled, suspended, punished if you are accessing content that's inappropriate or if you are writing something that seems like it's dangerous, right? Speaking in AAVE is flagged as dangerous. And I wanna note that every single one of these technologies are directly tied to law enforcement. So when your flags are happening because a student searched, I am a black man, which is a real, a real flag that happened, right? Um, that results in police coming to campus. Now, because black students are disproportionately, um, uh, they're more likely to use school-owned devices, right, because of socially engineered poverty, they are also using these devices at home. And so researchers have found that when they're doing their black history subjects or their research, right, that the police are coming to their house because the algorithms are flagging them after school hours. So while in school, maybe the, the principal gets the flag, after school is the police coming to your house. And this has happened many times, right? Um, another example of that technology is um, Proctorio, um, these facial recognition technology. So while Proctorio is a technology that determines cheating in real time, um, researchers found that um, the technology is pretty faulty. A lot of these technologies are very faulty, right? Um, on their website, they actually say that their facial detection system can distinguish between, and this is a quote, humans and lifeless objects. And yet the technology is incapable of identifying black faces. Right? So when black students try to log on using these facial detection systems, they actually get a notification that's something like no human detected, right? Almost like Winter's work around no humans involved, right? Um, again, those technologies are also connected to the police. So there is a, um, a range of technologies that are producing not only gaps um, in achievement and performance, and I would say synthetic gaps, right, AI-induced gaps um, in achievement and opportunity, um, but they're also uh, exacerbating gaps um, in discipline and feelings of safety and belonging um, and et cetera. So I really think that the idea that AI is somehow making our schools more equitable and more safe um, is a fallacy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can't argue with all of those stats. Um, I think that is one of the scariest parts of technology is how it's affecting the minds of our youth and criminalizing them as well. Um, something that's really important about your work though is you have, you have a program that you have explored with black youth to see what happens when they understand some of these things and they dissect this technology. Um, can you talk about what, what happens to our youth when they learn some of these things, some of these things and actually dig into it? Yeah. 
Um, so I'm going to start that by answering the second half of your first question, which was about critical race algorithmic literacy. Um, so the goal of this program is to actually foster young people's critical race algorithmic literacy. And I use algorithmic for a very particular reason. So an algorithm is defined computationally as a set of instructions designed to solve a problem, right? And building off of what you just said, how tech industry, um, they build these tools to solve problems, right? Um, and it reminds me of W.E.B. Du Bois' question of how does it feel to be a problem, right? And the idea, his assertion that the problem of the 20th century, and I would say the 21st century, is the problem, the Negro problem, right? Um, so if technologies are consistently giving anti-black results, right, all of those technologies that I just talked about that actually um, exacerbate uh, black death, dying, and discipline, uh, then it seems like the problem that these tools are designed to solve is the problem of black life. Right? Um, and so I have argued that anti-blackness is an algorithm, right? It is the algorithm designed to solve the problem of black life. And so we kind of, that's a point of entry into our discussion about schools and school-based technologies as being, um, you know, by default anti-black and about denigrating, disciplining, surveilling, right, the black body. Um, from there, we take a more expansive look at tools that move beyond the user and the tool, right? More than, I don't want students to come out of this class and know how to prompt engineer, right? They, they work with ChatGPT more effectively. Uh, we're talking about uh, reading the technological hardware, software, and infrastructures as text, right? Um, thinking about how do we understand content moderation systems, how do we understand machine learning models, um, and even thinking about the socio-technical, right? How these uh, technologies not only produce racism, right, but they actually um, are, the way they're designed is inherently racist. Um, we take a historical approach, and experien uh, experiential um, knowledge is really key. So these students know a lot about AI, often more than I do, right? Um, and so really centering them as creators and producers of knowledge um, is very important. And then we broaden our discussion to also think about um, like the ecological systems in which technologies reside, right? Um, so I know it was mentioned earlier, thinking about the environmental cost. Um, ChatGPT drinks water, right? Students don't always know that. Um, ChatGPT drinks fresh water, right? So it's actually creating a lot of um, disparities in our communities. Uh, our rivers are running dry, quite literally. Um, the data centers are disproportionately placed in black and brown communities, um, which means that the carbon footprints um, and the energy issues disproportionately affect us, right? We don't have running water in a lot of these communities. We have whole communities that go without power because of data centers, right? Um, Elon Musk's data center in Memphis, Tennessee uh, is actually now that area is considered the asthma capital of the US, um, and the black residents are in constant respiratory distress because of the methane gas turbines that are used to power his AI data center. Um, Grok on Twitter, right? Um, so the students learn about those environmental consequences as well, as well we read your work also. <laughs> and so they learned about surveillance and the histories of surveillance. Um, and then finally, they look at like the, the labor conditions, right? Who's actually training these systems? Who's behind the scenes? Because every time, it's black and brown folks, right? Prisoners are tasked with cleaning ChatGPT. Folks in Ghana and Kenya are paid less than $2 a day to train ChatGPT. Um, I mean, the list goes on, right? So they learn all of those different things, as well as, you know, the minerals are, um, for our devices are actually mined from African countries. Uh, our products are assembled in U.S. prisons. Our call centers are located in U.S. prisons. For you calling up Apple, you might be talking to somebody who was incarcerated, right? Um, and then where do our technologies go to die? African countries, right? They're dumped for miles in what's called electronic graveyards, right? And so there's all of these like um, toxic nuclear um, issues that surround our black community. So this is a global phenomenon. And so students understand that it's not just about how they're using ChatGPT, it's that broader ecology, right? That anti-blackness is global and it's tied into these like carceral geographies. Um, so in the end, after taking that class, um, they, they essentially, and this is in their own words, they say that it helps them engage with AI in a different way. One, AI becomes less magical, right? It's no longer fun. <laughs> Two, 
uh, they are more informed. So they often now opt out. And when they do opt in, it is very conscious, right? I'm going to use it for this particular reason because I'm not trying to you know, drain the rivers. Or I don't like that this system, this company actually has carceral labor. How do I find a company that I can use that, you know, um, like Ecosia, that um, gives money towards environmental uh, supports, things like that. So they become more informed users. And then they push back, right? So when their teachers are flagging them as cheating or cheaters, they come with the statistics, right? And they have the stats. Um, and they know things like, oh, I'm going to vote for this person who's on the you know, school board because this is, they have a stance on AI that I appreciate, right? So it's really fostering the socio-technical consciousness and I think socio-technical resistance. And fingers crossed some of them go into tech and design um, you know, different systems, systems that are meant to sustain and um, protect our communities, but I am not a computer scientist, so that's, that's not really up to me. Oh, thank you. Um, they develop a critical consciousness. <laughs>